the California newts are sort of iconic for the state. They're one of the most toxic animals in the world. They're long lived and they undergo enormous changes that are related to hormones used by humans themselves. I've been studying newts for literally decades, about 50 years to be exact. When it's time for the breeding season, hormones start changing them. It drives the males to the water. Their tail starts growing. Their arms get stronger for holding on to the female. When they're both in the water, the male is attracted by the scent of, an, of a ripe female. He then grabs onto her, holds onto her behind her armpits, and begins moving with her and rubbing his chin on the top of her head. And the chin has a secretion which excites her. And this may go on for minutes or even an hour. It can look violent to us and part of it may be planned because the female wants to pick the biggest, strongest, toughest male. And he's got to impress her. So she doesn't readily accept him until he's shown his stuff. When she's sufficiently stimulated, he lets go of her, he begins walking along the bottom of the pond, and she'll follow him, and as he walks, he deposits little packages of sperm, and she walks over and picks them up, and goes off and lays her egg, and they get fertilized in the female as they pass out of her body. We all hear stories about witches' brews, and they often use newts, eyes of newts. This may be because newts are common throughout Europe. They've been with man for a long time, and they tend to be toxic, which would make them dangerous and perhaps usable in a witch's brew. And they are also, in a way, sort of scary looking to people. All the combinations to create a wonderful potion. I love the way they look. I love the way they do their thing in front of us. They just turn me on, but they turn a lot of people on. There are a lot of customers who come in for Valentine's Day because gardens are beautiful places and visitors always enjoy newts.